All right, guys and girls, and welcome back. So today we're going to be doing a quick video on how to install a smart light switch. Now, today we're going to be installing this specific one, which is going to be in the description below. But a lot of what I'm going to show you today applies to literally any smart switch you can find out there. Um, but if you want to pick up this one after you see how it works, um, feel free to use the link below. Um, so one of the things I want to talk about, not every light switch is this way, but make sure you check this before you um, get one. This specific model um, requires 2.4 gigahertz wireless. And if you don't know what that means, there's a 99% chance that your wireless at your house already supports that. Um, I'm not going to go into detail on how to figure that out, but literally every wireless access point and router in the last 10 or 15 years um, supports 2.4. Um, there's an app you can install on your phone. I'll put in the link below that'll show you if there's a 2.4 gigahertz wireless at your house, but there almost certainly is. The other thing you need to install any of these smart light switches is you have to have a neutral wire in the light switch. Now, it depends on your home, when it was built, whether you have one or not. Um, I'll give you an example. In my house, I've converted all of my lights over. Um, I don't know how many that is, maybe 30 or so switches. And every one of them except for one, the only switch was in the laundry room. It did not have a neutral wire. So if you don't have a neutral wire, and I'll show you what that means later, um, you cannot install this switch. You'd almost need to bring in an electrician to get a neutral connection there for you. Um, the other thing that you'll need is you're going to need a couple of tools that most people probably already have. Mostly, um, you're going to need a Phillips and a flat screwdriver, most likely. You may need a pair of wire cutters and strippers. Um, you may not. just depends on the situation. But one of the things that is not optional is you need some sort of voltage detector um, or multimeter. You need some way to make sure that the circuit is actually turned off before you start working on it. Safety first. I don't want you getting in there and shocking yourself. So you'll need like one of these guys. These guys are really cheap. Um, I'll even put a link to one in the description below if you already have one. Or if you have a, a multimeter, you can do the exact same thing with it. So without further ado, let's get started in replacing it. So the first thing we have to do is make sure that we turn the power off to the light switch. I recommend you pick up one of these. There's a link in the description. Just a little device that detects whether or not there's power to the switch. So you'll see when I point it at the switch, it turns red, indicating that we've got voltage there, which would be dangerous to work on. But um, if I'll go turn the breaker off, um, so now I've turned the breaker off, and you'll notice that we're not seeing any power. And I'm going to recommend you do this a second time once we get the uh, cover off, um, just because of how these guys work. All right, so let's get started. Step one, got to get the old switch out, right? Typically, it's two flat screws. Um, in some, it may be Phillips screws, but um, they've been doing flat screws for a long time. It's usually just two if it's a single gang plate like this. So take the switch, the switch cover off. Then we need to take the switch out. It's almost always um, Phillips screws as well recently, but it could be either way. Um, either way, that's why I recommend you have a flat and Phillips screwdriver for this. And then of course, if you have like a little electric screwdriver, this makes much, much quicker than me doing it by hand. Now I recommend that you very safely pull the old switch out. And like I said before, before we start working on this, even though I know the breaker's off, I'm gonna come back with my voltage tester and I'm going to verify a second time before I start touching these wires that there's no power to this switch. Um, I don't want to get shocked. Most likely you wouldn't get hurt, but I don't want to take that risk. All right, so now that we know there's no power, we're going to take, we're going to remove the old wires or remove the wires from the old switch. So in this case, um, these screws are actually flat or Phillips. And you'll see this switch I'm removing today actually has three wires going to it, a hot, um, a load, and a neutral. There's a good chance that yours will only have two wires going to it, and that would be the hot and the load. I'm going to show you what that would look like. The white wire you see in this um, example here, there's a really good chance that you wouldn't see that in your switch. Um, if you do, great. Um, it'll save you some time. If not, when you um, open it up, you're just going to have two wires connected to it, and basically it would look um, kind of like what I'm going to make this look like. I'm going to remove that that extra white wire which is the neutral wire in this case so here's probably what yours would look like you just have two wires um, in this case they're both black a lot of times they'll be black and red and what you're gonna have to do is remember before I said you had to have a neutral wire you're probably gonna have to dig in the box and pull out this little um, kind of uh, several neutral wires tied together you're also you also may have a set of ground wires in there that would either be exposed copper wire like this or they'd be green so if you have those in your box, um, pull them out. And now, now we got to identify the wires. So typical colors are green is ground, white is neutral, hot is black, and the line, the wire going to your light is red. In my case, you'll see I don't have a red wire. So you'll see there's no power to the neutral. 
And I've turned the breaker back on, by the way, just so we can identify these. So you'll have to turn the breaker back on. You'll see this bottom right wire is the hot wire. Just because you notice that the voltage tester I have goes off when I get close to it. So now I've turned the breaker back off again, just because now I'm going to be working with these wires. I want to make sure that um, I don't get shocked while I'm working on them. So here's just a little thing that I like to do. You don't have to do this. I'm going to put a little piece of tape on my hot wire. And in my case, that's helpful because my hot and my load wire are both black with some white paint all on them. Um, this helps me identify it in case they kind of get mixed up. All right, now we know what the wires are. Let's actually install the switch. So you'll notice that this new switch actually has four wires already coming out of the back of it. A white, a green, a black, and a red, which is typically what you might see in your, um, in your house. Um, and they're labeled on the back as well, if you forget what they are, but we're gonna go through um, how to hook them up. So I'm just gonna hook them up from um, the neutral all the way over to the um, load wire. So we start with this neutral wire. And what I've got here is a wire nut. This is the same wire nut that came off. Um, mine's big enough. If, if you find that it's not big enough, you may have to pick up some extra wire nuts um, from your local hardware store. I'm just gonna hold the white wire next to the neutral wire from the box, and I'm gonna screw this in really tightly. And, and we'll make sure that they're secure before we um, actually put the box in. So ground wire, same thing. You don't have to have a ground wire. You, it may be that you don't have one in their box and you can't hook this green wire up and that's fine. The switch will work fine without it. However, however, if you have a ground wire, I highly recommend you hook it up. So now we're gonna connect the green wire. This one's going to, in my case, the ground wires in my boxes are just exposed copper. Yours may be same or green, or again, they may not exist at all. It doesn't matter. So the next wire you see we're gonna hook up is the black wire coming from the switch, which is the hot wire. This is the actual wire that carries the voltage and it's the really dangerous one. Um, thankfully, um, we've already identified our hot wire with the piece of tape, so I know which one to um, connect to. And I'm just gonna use one of the wire nuts that was included with the switch. They're really designed for, only, for connecting only two wires together. And in this case, that's all I have. But in, as you can see, one of the other wire nuts on the neutral is much bigger, just because we've got about four wires in there. Lastly, we're gonna connect the load wire. Now this is just the wire that runs to the light itself. So the brown from the switch will go to your load wire, which you identified earlier. Could be a red wire. In my case, it's black. Now I'm just gonna make sure that all these wires are secure. I'm gonna tug on them a little bit and make sure they don't slide out of the wire nuts. And now this might be one of the hardest parts you do is you've got to figure out how to get all these wires back in there um, in such a way that the switch will fit too. So just kind of some, there's no real um, super intelligent way to do this. Just push them in with your hand um, as best you could. And then once you, um, once you get them all snugly back in the box, you're gonna want to mount your new switch. It comes with two screws to mount it with. Um, you also could probably use the old um, screws out of your old switch if you wanted to. In this case, I'm gonna use the two new screws that it came with, and you're just gonna basically get these lined up with the holes on the back, and you're gonna wanna tighten these. Be careful and don't over tighten these. A couple things, this is plastic, so you could break the actual switch itself. Also, depending on um, how the box in your wall is, sometimes when you over tighten them, you'll actually notice that you start pulling the box out of the wall. So just tighten it down snugly where it's not gonna, you know, move back and forth. That's all you need to do. You're not, um, you're not gonna be hanging weights off of this, so it doesn't have to be too secure. So once you get that done, this one comes with a nice screwless plate, which I really like. It just snaps on. That's it. Just pop it on. If you ever need to take it off, um, there's a little notch at the very bottom that you can put like a small flat screwdriver in or something. Now we need to install the app. So right now we actually have a working switch, but it, the switch is much more powerful if we actually install the app. So you can either scan the barcode with your barcode scanning app like I did, or I'm gonna post the link in the description on where to get the app. You also see the name of it. You could just search for that, whether you're on an Apple or Android device. And once you get the app installed, you're gonna to have to register, at least the first time, you have to register for an account. So you'll see um, same stuff you're, you're used to having to do, you know, put in your email address, create a password, walk through all those steps. So the way this one works is once you put in your email address, you're going to get an email. It's got a little verification code. You have to type that in. Then you got to put in a password. And then once you get to there, now you're going to have the point of adding a device. So if we click add device, in this case, it's under electrician at the top and it's called Wi-Fi. It's called switch Wi-Fi. 
and you'll see it's telling us what to do. Reset the device first and confirm that the light is blinking quickly. You'll see the light is blinking quickly and that's the default behavior when you turn power back onto the switch. If it's not, um, just keep watching at the end of the video. I'm going to show you how to do some troubleshooting and how to take it through the different modes if it's not blinking quickly. Here's where you'll need to put in your Wi-Fi name and password. I'm not going to show you my Wi-Fi password, so click on that and go to connect. And then just give this a couple minutes. I've actually fast-forwarded this so you don't have to watch the entire process. Um, I want to say it took around a minute or two. Um, it's not as fast as you see on the screen, but you also don't have to wait for it to get to 100. It, it, it only gets to about halfway and then really takes off. So here we go. Now we have a working switch. So just click Done. And now you'll see you have this switch that we can um, actually start using or making some changes to. So, it's called Switch 1, you'll see, and probably one of the first things you'd want to do before going any further, you're probably going to want to rename this because Switch 1 doesn't mean anything. So just hold down on the switch, and this box will pop up that lets you change the name. So I'm just changing it to light. If you'll notice up in the upper right, we can click the pencil icon, and then click the pencil icon again. And now here we can change the icon. We can actually upload a picture from your phone to to make the switch look like uh, whatever you want it to, or we can rename it. So I'm just gonna rename this one to bedroom switch um, because it's in the bedroom. You see, you can also add a location to it. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna go back. And now if you simply tap on the light switch button, you'll see that the light will actually come on um, exactly what we were hoping to do with this process. So you just put, you just tap on your app on your phone and you'll see the light comes on on your app and the actual switch on the wall comes on. Again, you can tap it again, and the little orange light on the switch goes out, and the blue light on the actual switch goes out. So, that's how you use the app as far as just the basic stuff. If you look at the bottom, you'll also notice there's our timer and countdown. So if we click on countdown, this is a handy little feature. Um, you can set like a five minute countdown timer, and it will do the opposite of whatever the switch is in at the moment. So right now the switch is off. So you'll see if I go back in here, in five minutes it's gonna turn the switch on. And if the switch was on and you set a countdown timer, it would turn the switch off. So either way. The other one you see says timer. So if you click timer, we can actually add timers or schedules in here. So um, the example I have is, um, let's say you have to wake up at 6.30 in the morning. You know, this is my bedroom light. So I can set a um, schedule so that every morning at 6.30, Monday through Friday, uh, my bedroom light will actually come on. You see, you can even get a notification on your phone if you wanted to. Um, I'm not going to do that. And you can choose whether the light comes on or off. So I have a timer so that at 6.30 in the morning, my bedroom light will come on, help me wake up in the morning. I can also add a second one. So hypothetically, let's say it only takes me 20 minutes to get ready in the morning, but I frequently like to leave the light on or accidentally leave my bedroom light on. I can have my bedroom light turn off at 7 o'clock, assuming that I'm on my way to work by then. So um, you can play around with this. Obviously, you understand all the different things you can do. So 7 o'clock, my light's going to turn off. 6.30, my light turns on. Um, that makes sure that when I leave for the day, I don't accidentally leave my lights on. Although you could use this app to control them anyway. So nice little feature we got there. So let's move on to adding this to your Google Home. So I have the Google Home at, up. So I'm just going to do add a new device. And then on here, I'm going to do setup device. Then I'm going to click the one that says have something already set up that works with Google. And here, you could search for Smart Life here, or you can just do the um, worst possible thing possible, which is what I'm doing, and just scroll down. Um, there's just so much stuff that works with Google and Alexa that these menus are um, overwhelming, right? So scroll down until you find Smart Life. You'll see the Smart Life icon. And when I finally get there, so there we go, click Smart Life, and then it's just a matter of putting in your username and password. Um, put in your username and password, click Link Now, authorize it, and then now your light can actually be controlled by your Google. Um, Alexa is the same way, um, and I'm actually going to show you a little bit of how to do the Alexa in a minute, um, just because this is always changing with the new app. So now we're back at the home screen in Google Home, and if I click the little um, Speak button at the bottom, you know, as if I was going to tell Google Home to do something verbally, so if I, I, I hit that, the very first time I do, it's going to want to know, where, where is this bedroom switch located? I know it seems obvious to you, but Google Home doesn't know that. So I'm going to tell it that the bedroom switch is located in. I'm going to actually add a new room. So I'm at a custom room, and I'm just going to say it's in my bedroom, obviously. Um, so Google has the idea of the name of the switch, but you can also tell Google, like, 
turn off all the lights in the bedroom and that way it knows this. So now let's give this actually a shot. So if I tap the little speaker icon again um, so that I can actually give Google a command. And of course this works with your actual Google Home devices the exact same way. But um, if I tap that and give it a verbal command to turn on my um, switch, you will can watch that happen in real time. So I'm telling it to turn on the bedroom light. You'll see that it says, got it, master bedroom light, and bam, my light came on. It's that simple. Now, as far as Alexa goes, um, these instructions are always changing. If you go to the settings on your switch, you'll see all these different um, services you can set up. Google is on there, Alexa is on there. So if you click Alexa, um, same kind of concept. Here's a big blue button you click to sign in with Amazon, or you can click beneath that, and there's actually a video and detailed instructions in the app on how to set it up with Alexa. So it walks you step by step through how to set this guy up with your Alexa, or if you go back and go to Google Assistant, same thing that we just did. The instructions in there are detailed, even with a little video, and this is just important because it's always changing. All right. So now that we've got that done, let's talk about how to troubleshoot some of the most common problems you're <clears> going to have with this switch. So let's say you've got the switch installed and it just doesn't work physically. Like you push the button, nothing happens on it. And of course this one's working, but let's say you're, per you're pressing the button and the switch is not working. The first problem to check is there's a chance you have your hot and your load wires reversed. And that's the black and brown. Remember how we tested that with our voltage tester earlier, but that's one of the most common problems. It won't damage the switch if you had them reversed, but the switch won't operate correctly. So let's just do a verification. That's our, our load, which shouldn't have power. And that's our line, which does have power. So in this case, it's set up correctly. But if your switch wasn't working, that's the first thing I would check. Now, the second thing is there's possibility that you have your neutral and your load wires reversed. That's the white and brown wire. Um, unfortunately, without a multimeter, there's not a great way to test this and make sure that um, not a great safe way to test this. So because you're not going to damage the switch, if your switch isn't working at all and you, you tested the load and the line and they're correct, just try swapping your, your um, neutral and your load wire and see if that fixes it. Now the second problem is if the switch is actually, you have a blue light on it, but it doesn't work. So if that's the case, most likely the issue is your hot and your neutral are reversed. So remember, we know how to test for a hot. That's a hot, definitely. And the neutral shouldn't show anything. But just because there's no power there doesn't mean that's your neutral. That could also be your load. So you won't hurt the switch if they're reversed. But if the light comes on on the switch, but it won't work, that's the first thing to do is to try swapping those two wires. All right, so with that being said, you've got to learn how to go through the different modes. So if you press and hold the power button, you'll notice the light's blinking slowly right now. If I press and hold the power button for about five seconds, the light starts blinking rapidly. That's how you get it into the initial setup mode in the app. I mentioned that earlier. So if you need to get back to that mode, you just press and hold it for five seconds. And if you press and hold it for five seconds again, it goes through to the next mode, which is the slow blink. So if you're having trouble getting it set up with the rapid blink in the app, there's a second method to use for troubleshooting. So get the light blinking slowly, go back to add device, choose switch Wi-Fi. On this screen right here, you'll see at the top right, there's other modes. Click that and click AP mode. This is going to give us a second method of attempting to configure it when it's not working correctly. So it tells us to confirm it's blinking slowly, which we did. We remember we, we do that by simply pressing the power button on the switch for five seconds and it'll alternate. And if you're having trouble getting this to work, also test to make sure you have good Wi-Fi connectivity where the switch is. Bring your phone or laptop up there and make sure they can connect to your Wi-Fi. That, that's one of the first things you should check as well. So it's blinking slowly. Um, we can confirm it's blinking slowly. We go through this same process again of um, putting in our Wi-Fi credentials. And then this time it's a little different. We're going to click the go to connect button and that's going to bring up our Wi-Fi settings and you'll see that give it a second and the switch smart life will show up. So you're going to click and join the Wi-Fi of your actual light switch. So once you do that, go back to the app itself. Now that you've connected to the smart life um, actual Wi-Fi, you'll just um, whatever method on your phone, um, pull back up the app so that you can finish the setup process. And once you get back to the app, it's going to recognize that you're connected and it's going to go through this same process as before 
of joining to the Wi-Fi and um, basically contacting the servers on the internet so that it can start working. Um, and then once that happens, again, I'm speeding this up so you don't have to watch it go in real time. Then hopefully when you get to that point, if you click the switch icon, hopefully the light comes on for you. Um, and now you have a working switch. All right, I hope this video was helpful. Um, if it was, please, you know, let me know, like, subscribe, um, post any comments below. If you need some help, I'm happy to help in any way I can. Um, otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys and gals next time. Thank you.